today. We're making this photo book that is going to be super easy. I'm gonna give you guys the secret sauce to how to create something super clean like this, but also it looking super modern and showcasing all of your best moments in a nice photo book. So let's get right into it. Before we get started, I'm very excited to announce that our website is up. It's actually up. It took me super long and I appreciate it if you guys can check it out, support the channel. I'm offering you guys a free resume template. So get that, get that while you can. All right, we're going in and we're going to just go ahead and create a new document like, like we always did. Now I did some research for everybody and the most common or one of the most common layouts seem to be these horizontal uh, photo books that are still 11 by, or eight and a half by 11. So they're still these nice letter size paper. For this particular document, we're going to be creating uh, 11 pages. We're starting on page number one. We're gonna check on the facing pages, which is very important. And we're gonna make sure that it's in the landscape orientation when we create this. Now, we're gonna leave the margins at 0.5. It's gonna be a great margin to do your prints on, depending if you're on if you want full bleed or if you want the bleed to actually be there. But we're leaving it on 0.5. If you want any of your images to go all the way out to the edge and you wanna send it to a local printing press, they'll need just a little bit extra of that image so that they can cut the page so that it doesn't actually trim off any part of your image. Now, what you wanna do when you're setting up this document is going down to bleed and slug and make sure you turn this to 0.125 inch. After you've done that, you can see that there is this little red outline around your page. And whenever you want to print anything that is full bleed, meaning the images go all the way to the outside, what you're gonna need to do is actually drag it all the way to that bleed on the outside for this page to be print and cut in a way that allows your images to occupy the entire page. So now that we have this document, make sure that you actually have all your photos. So before I actually get all my images in, I like to use a program or a website to actually make sure that all my images look in a similar fashion. For example, if they're all warmer tone, it just makes overall feel look so much better. So. To do that, we're gonna be using uh, Pixlr once again. So here I am on my Pixlr suite, and I'm just gonna go to the batch editor. This will make our workflow so much, so much easier. So for this particular example, I'm gonna be using some photos uh, from Pexo, and I'm just going to go and upload all of these guys here. So if I go into the folder where I have all my photos, I can select everything and then just open it in Pixlr really fast. So once you get into the Pixlr batch editor, you can do a lot of cool things. One is crop. If you want everything to just be a one to one square, you can do that. You can also add border, which I think is super cool. You can add a white border to all of these to give that more retro effect, super cool. What I'm going to do is turn up the vibrance a little bit. You can see all the pictures changing. You can see the colors being more vibrant. Similarly, I can turn it down and make everything less vibrant, but I'm going to turn up the vibrance just a little bit, click add, and I'm going to turn up saturation maybe just a little bit. Great. And what I'm going to do that's the most important for what I'm trying to do is just actually change the temperature. We want everything to be a little bit warmer. So not too much of that white tone in the pictures. We want more of the yellow tone because it's a family, you know, you have that warm feeling that is going on. So on the bottom left here, you can see that I can export and it'll help us export in JPEG. We want it on high quality almost always. And I'm just going to go ahead and download that into a folder. That makes sense. Okay, going back into our InDesign sheet, the magic sauce guys, the absolute magic sauce is guides, but we're not gonna be doing it on the actual page itself. We're going into the page tab and then we're going into the parents sheet. Now the parents sheets basically means whatever appears on this page is going to appear on all the pages that are associated with this parent page. So you can see that this is a parent and on the icons of these pages, you can see a little A, that's what that means. So on these two pages, what we're going to do is go to layouts, go to create guides, and the magic number guys is we're doing four rows, okay? And we're doing six columns. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. 
And if I go back to our regular pages, you can see that the guides are there on every single page. Another thing we're going to be adding into the parent page is just the page number. So what we're going to do is create a text. So we're going to do a type tool, zoom into one of the corners of the page. I'm just gonna create a nice rectangular text box. And what I'm going to do is right click and then go into insert special character. And then we're going to markers and we're going to current page number. So make sure you put that in. And then you can adjust this to whatever font you like. So for example, if I want this to be something like a Futura, I can do that. So I'm gonna put Futura and then I'm going to change this into a way smaller font because for page numbers, we don't need them that big. And we want it to make it just a little bit lower on the page. Now for the page numbers, I also find it's good practice to make them a lot lighter. So I'm making them 50% opacity on the top here. We're going to copy the exact same thing, but onto the other side. So I'm doing this. And then we're going to go and double click into this text box and make sure it is right justified because this is on the right side of the page. Great, now if we go back into our pages and we go into our page itself, you can see that it's helped us label all of these pages for us without us having to go in and do this independently. Now, the problem arises when we don't want page number one on the cover page. How we're gonna get rid of that is we're going to right click and then we're just going to go ahead and apply parent to pages and change this to none. So you can see it's gonna get rid of the, not only the guides, but also it's going to help us get rid of the page number, which we don't really want. Okay. Getting into designing the actual layout itself. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of go-to layouts that you really can't go wrong with for one picture on the page, two pictures on the page, three pictures on the page, and if you really wanna push it, four pictures on the page. I really wouldn't recommend going any further than that unless you're just kind of laying them out on the grid. So guys, the workflow for every single photo that I'm inputting into here is I'm going into the rectangular frame tool and I'm basically creating a giant frame, wherever that may be. You can see I've created a frame. After that, I'll use the direct selection tool or press escape just so my cursor comes back up. Then I'll go to the folder where all my pictures are. And all I'm doing is dragging the photo into the picture frame. You can see that it's coming in very big. I'm gonna select the frame and I'm going to use the shortcut key, Control, Alt, Shift, C to fit the content proportionally. Alternatively, you can click on the image itself, right click, go into fitting, and then hit fit frame proportionally. So let's get started with the first page itself. We're gonna create a very simple cover page. And for the cover page, we're going to drag one big image in so that it fits what's going on on the page. Now you may need to go ahead and turn back on our parent page just so you know where our guide is so that we can place an image that kind of conforms to the rest of the layout of the entire booklet. All we have to do is drag a rectangular frame tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this from the outer margins and the out to the outer margins of the inner core of our layouts. And I'm dragging a picture in. This is going to be our cover. Now, usually for these photo covers, uh, either you have a one big picture like this that stands in the front or you just have text. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna add both text and a picture just to show you guys what's possible here. So I'm dragging a very simple text box. And what I'm going to do is type in what I want. Okay, I've got the cherished memories text in here. For these type of photo books, a lot of them have these really fancy schmancy text. So for example, if I use this text called Forte for this one and change it to something like a 60 font, uh, it usually looks a lot better than if I use a sans serif font, which is those more modernist looking fonts. Now you can place this really anywhere you think makes sense. It can go right under, but what I like to do is kind of have these two overlap just a little bit. These two pages, we're going to be looking at how to do a one page layout. Now, the simplest one is to create one that is full bleed, right? You're going from margin or not margin, you're going from page to page and you're basically populating this entire page with a single picture. Remember to fit it with our shortcut key, but there we go, that's one great layout already. Now you can also obviously drag this back so that it's right at the margin, and it's still a great looking page with one giant big picture, one giant focus picture. 
If your picture is more of a portrait form, what you can do is kind of the same thing. You want to occupy, let's say it's more of a full bleed. So let's say I drag it out to the third column to the right there. And then all I'm gonna do is place in an image. For example, if my portrait image is something like this, I can fit that in and it'll look really good as a image just by itself. You can also have it on this side, but I would not really recommend putting it into the middle of the page. It's not the best way to lay something out like this. You can also just make this respect the margins like that. And in order to fill in what's going on on the right, I really like to make a text box. And here we're thinking of the text box as kind of a design element, right? So we don't want the text box to be too big. So maybe it's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna fill it with some placeholder text. So right click and fill with placeholder text. And then I'm going to make this into a way lighter font. So maybe something like a 50. And you can see that this already makes this page look a lot better. Maybe I wanna center it in the middle of the white space. And for these kind of things, try not to put too much text. So I'm gonna get rid of some of that text, double click on the corners just to make it fit nicely. And there you go, that's a super clean one picture layout for your photo book with a little bit of text. Here's an alternative that also works really well with the one picture layout. We're dragging more of a square frame over here and then fit it. Usually a portrait image works uh, pretty good, uh, but a landscape image usually works better for something square like this because it can focus in on the subject, which is in the middle. Uh, again, you can respect the margins like that. And on the right side page, if you wanna fit a landscape photo, so right here, I'm gonna drag it so that there is one column and one row of our guides left. And this again is also a great layout. And what you can actually do is also copy the text from the previous page and just give it a little bit of text to balance out the page. So doing something like that will make this look a lot better and a lot more clean than if we didn't have that. All right, Sam, what if I wanted to have two different photos on this page and maybe both of them are landscape? Well, I got some great ones for you. So first one is going to be a giant photo on the right and a smaller photo on the left. So I'm gonna do that. Drag from margin all the way out to one of these corners, right? We're leaving one row and one column of the guides that are left. And all we're going to do is put in a photo over here. And then for the second photo, we are doing all the way down here. It's just going to be a little pocket one. So again, dragging and dropping these photos in, great. Now, this sometimes might not show up super well. So a trick I like to do is going into the effects tab, going into effects, do some drop shadow. So you can see that once you select the drop shadow, it's gonna have that uh, shadow behind the picture itself. You can adjust it. We're gonna keep it simple and just leave it as it is, but you can play around with this. So that gives a lot of depth onto this page, which is exactly what we want. Uh, another great way to lay out two pictures that are landscape is if we do simply just add two of them like this onto the right side of the page. As you can see, we can have them so that it's touching right at the edge of the photo for full bleed, or we can respect the margins a little bit more so that we have more of a white, outer line. We can also balance out the white space on the right here. Again, what's our trick? Balance out the white space with text. So we're doing that with some of the text and we're just gonna, you know, do what makes sense. Now, what if these two photos are portrait? Personally, I like the two photo portrait pages a lot. And that's because we can have them in a beautiful, beautiful, just full bleed layout like this. So two frames on the on the page, one each on each side with the margins down the middle. Right, already, boom, that looks like a beautiful page. Nothing really needs to be done more than that for this page itself. Of course, you can also shrink everything so that it's not full bleed and you respect the margins a little bit. Now, if you have one portrait, one landscape, we have one big frame on the left and then we have another small frame on the right, something like that. And the great thing about this layout is you can move this picture up if you like. You can have it down if you like. Heck, you can even have it right down the middle like this. Now, what I do like is if we actually have it on the bottom and we fill the top with, as you guessed it, just a little bit of text. Sam, what if I want three photos? Pushing it a little bit, I would argue that three is actually a lot on one single page. But 
I got the layout for you. I got the hookups for you. Don't even worry. I'm going to go ahead and actually add a couple more pages. It looks like we're running out of space here. So because of the magic sauce that is our guides, we can actually go ahead and create a nice balanced three right here. Okay, so we can just do three thin pictures frames right here, right? It's going to go right to the sides and fill it with your favorite image. There you go. It's a beautiful, beautiful three picture layout for a page like this. Now, if they are all landscape, you can also do a great layout like this, where we basically just are dragging three of these that are filling the page. Again, great layout for if you have three landscape photos and you want to fit them onto a single page. Now, for the white space, as you guys should know by now, great to just put some text there to balance out the whole page. Wow, that is looking great. Now, if we want to get a bit feisty and we want to put four onto one of these, what we can do is, as you've guessed it for the portrait ones, you can just lay it out in the grid. Because our grid is laid out so well in this format, you can drag all four of these photos on like this. Boom, there it is, four landscape photos on a single page, super clean. Now, if you wanna do four portrait photos in this layout, it's gonna be a little bit trickier, so pay attention here. So I'm going over to the rectangular frame tool as always, and I'm going for the top of that guide all the way down to the bottom of that guide. Now, the thing to take in account here is that we're trying to go to kind of the middle between those two guides right here. Now we're going to go just a tiny bit to the left of that. So almost one and a half of these guides, okay? And what we're going to do is just copy this frame over and copy this frame over and copy this frame over. Now, if you need to, you can select all of these frames and then you can just give it a nice spacing adjustment, right? Just to make sure that all the spacing is the same between them and then populate it with your image. And there you go, it's a great, beautiful and simple four picture layouts. All right guys, now we're getting really feisty. We need to put six photos onto this crammed page. Now, I would only recommend this if, you know, it's like a series or something and you're basically trying to lay them out in a progression, but otherwise, you know, stick to one, two, or three maybe even three photos on a page. If we wanted to do full bleed, we can drag the photos all the way out like this. And then this one to the middle, it's gonna be slightly smaller, but that's okay. And again, we're doing the same thing. So I'm going to drag all these guys all the way down by holding the Alt key. And if we populate this with the images, you'll see that this is what it looks like. So that's what that looks like with full bleed. If we want to respect the margins, always respect the margins. Always remember to refit your picture after you adjust it to the margins because your subject might be out of focus. Now, I wouldn't really recommend going over the six picture limits um, just because it's a nice picture book, right? You want the pictures to speak for themselves. You don't wanna just make the page way too busy with way too many pictures. Nobody's gonna like that. But there we go, that is our book. You just have to export this. Again, just a reminder that if any of your images that you want to print, is full bleed, meaning it occupies the entirety edge of the page. You wanna drag it out to the bleed edge outside like this. Just so when it's cut, you have a nice clean edge rather than some white line. Um, make sure you guys go back to the beginning when I set up the document if you don't have this. Now, if we're going to go ahead and export this, we're gonna go up to the top, file, all the way down to export. And then we're going to go into a folder that we want to have it name it what you want, and then go ahead and hit save. Once this comes out, you can leave everything as a high quality print preset. What I would change is into the marks and bleeds, if you're, again, printing this full bleed, make sure that we're checking all printers marks and we're using this use document bleed settings, okay? Super important if you wanna bring this to your local print shop for them to print it for you, full bleed. And then you're gonna go ahead and export. If all your pictures are not full bleed, meaning they respect the page's margins, don't worry too much about this step. But go ahead and export that and you'll have your PDF. So you can take that PDF to your local print shop, you can take it online, and in a couple of weeks, boom, there it is, your amazing photo book that you made. So if you guys have learned anything, please leave that in the comments down below. Let me know what you enjoyed and what I could improve on. But with that said, check out our website. Super proud of what we've done there. And thank you, Pixlr, for sponsoring this video.